because it is not the same as the ultimate version. So first of all, Banjo looks awesome. Just want to say that all of, all the animations they put into this are so good. Um, everything from like slow walk to idle to jabs. I mean, it's just it's it's so good. Look at this because he pops out and idle. Oh yeah, teeter is uh, pretty pretty great because he's pulling him back. But let's get into the moves. So the jabs you got the the bear swipes. Triple swipe, no rapid jab. Triple swipe actually moves them. The third one actually moves them forward. Jab three. Um, all right, tilts. We got down tilt. Which uh, here I'll throw the hitboxes on for you so you can see them. Nice little disjoint there. Forward tilt. The bayonet. Up tilt, kind of like a DK up tilt but a lot faster. Um, I don't think it it doesn't come out faster because that would be crazy. Yeah, but it finishes a lot faster. Um, also, really unique thing about some of Banjo's moves here. Uh, moves where Banjo swings his arm and Kazooie swings her wing. Um, there are two different sets of hitboxes, and they have slightly different properties. Um, you can't hit them both. If you're close, you see Kazooie's wings will have, like, the sword sound, while Banjo's will have the regular hit sound, like that. So, yeah, they can hit twice, and, yeah, the hits do slightly different things. So, yeah, up tilt, down tilt, F tilt, we got all the tilts. Um, let's look at aerials. So... He does not have the normal 64 nair. Instead, spins around kind of like a DK nair. Again, with the two different sets of hitboxes because it uses Banjo's arms and Kazooie's wings. Um, so you see there, two different sets of hitboxes. So that's nair. Uh, we got fair. Which is what it should have been in Ultimate. And it's insane that they made it back air. So this move is really unique because it actually stalls you in the air a little bit. You move down so slightly. So it actually, this move can be used to like perfect land on platforms because you're moving down a little bit. Uh, it's pretty cool. But yeah, the three hits. Hello everybody and welcome back. It has been a long time, but We've got another Smash Remix update for you, and this one has a ton of content. So let's get into it. That last character slot has been taken up by Banjo and Kazooie. Uh, we'll go over their moves real quick. So it has this uh, kind of like reverse hit that I'm not very good at. But yeah, so we got Dare's the kick. Um, up air, kind of like a wing swipe. Let's get you up here. Oops. Oh, I still have Blast Zone Warp turned on. We'll go over that later. But yeah, it's actually a pretty strong up air. Um, so it can be like a, a good KO move. Um, it reaches pretty low, so you can use it like at the ground. But yeah, that's up air, and then back air. This one took a lot of work, so props to um, the guys that worked on it, like Soap and Frey, I believe, were the main two. Uh, but the back air is the pack whack, and it's really cool because Banjo actually takes off his backpack and swings it around. It's a pretty long one, so it's a, a slow back air, and it comes out in frame 12, you see. Uh, but big disjoint on it, and pretty strong. And just really cool animation. All right, so we got our aerials, we got our grounded stuff. Let's do just our throws. Um, back throw. This is a really cool one. Or uh, forward throw is really cool. Back throw is great too. Back throw. He just chucks people. So that makes sense. But 
forward throw. And this was a... Forward throw definitely has uh, has some haters. I love it. Just a Zangief pile driver from Street Fighter 2. You can set up tech chases. Uh, higher percents, you might be able to get something off of it. It's definitely tough to combo with. Um, but yeah, it's a, just a fun move. I love the little pile driver. Alright, so... Uh, specials. Banjo. Neutral special is the egg. You cannot rapid fire them. This is as fast as it'll go. Um, but really unique thing about this move is if you press B and then quickly press back, you'll you'll shoot them out the other way. This uh, ex got experimented with a few different ways. Uh, first, at first it was. Oh, at first when you did it, it actually turned you around. So if you wanted to spit them out backwards, you, it was the same input, but it would spin you around. So you could like run at someone and and reverse it. Now, uh, if you want to do that, you would have to pivot. Um, and for a bit, it was a hold. Hold B was to reverse it. Uh, but this is what it, it ended up with. You got the tap, you have the reverse. And that's the neutral. The down special has two different versions. Um, grounded, you have the beak barge, which pops people up. And uh, yeah, so grounded, pretty cool. You can, if you go off stage with it, you can do a little roll out there. And the aerial, uh, the aerial is the build drill. So it multi-hit into like a strong finish. You can control the drift of it a little bit. Um, like before and during. But, yep. And then up special. This one, uh, kind of tough to get used to. But really fun move. So the up special. The first, when you first input up and B. Banjo kind of just jumps up in the air. Um, but when you hit B a second time, you do uh, the Beak Bomb. And you can kind of control this a little bit. You can do like like a quick one, um, or you can do the max height. Um, one important thing to note about it is it grabs pretty low on the ledge. If you look at uh, this, this little guy here, whoops. Oh, I was just too low, but you get the idea. It's um, it, it grabs pretty low because because of the way the move works. Um, it had to had to make it so that people just shielding at the ledge wouldn't make it impossible to recover. Like you would just keep bouncing off. But yeah. That's the move. Uh, can be used as a finisher. Can be used to recover. You could just do the up part. You can do that part. But yeah, that's uh, that's Banjo, and uh, he's pretty awesome. I think people are gonna have a ton of fun using him, and uh, definitely not like definitely not like Ultimate, where everyone was all excited for Banjo, and then he was like a really slow zoner. But this version, uh, pretty fun. Really good tools. Uh, some unique situations with uh, like the special and the double hit boxes. But yeah, Banjo is awesome. I don't know how I forgot, but smash attacks. Banjo's F smash just slams Kazooie on the ground. Nice, fast, disjointed, kind of like Conquer F smash with the frying pan. Uh, down smash. Similar to like a modern DK down smash. But again, it has the double hitboxes. So it can have hit with Banjo's arms and Kazooie's wings. And last one, up smash. So down, we had 
you know, Banjo's arms and Kazooie's wings slamming down. And up smash, we have just Kazooie's wings going up as Banjo dips out of the way. Yeah, you get the double hit on the ground. And uh, it's definitely like a finisher. But, yep. Next, we have... The D-pad variant of Goemon Ebisumaru. Ebisumaru almost made it into the game uh, during the Goemon patch, but just wasn't quite enough time to get him finalized and stuff. Ended up in this patch. Ebi is so fun. Uh, I love playing as this character. He's ridiculous. And uh, yeah, the D-pad, like, quote, boss variant, uh, title is very appropriate for him because he just has some ridiculous stuff but he's super fun to play he's really goofy uh definitely fits like the theme of the character so we'll just go over the moves real quick um a lot of it is similar to going on so we don't you know it's nothing too crazy but it does have a decent amount of unique moves so let's we'll go real quick so jabs is this fan he only has one jab the close hit sends people away and the uh if you're a little farther away it brings them towards you so it's pretty funny that's so jab tilts down tilt same as going on he just uses the hammer up tilt is a peach f tilt from melee but i don't know why it's an f tilt that's stupid they should have made it an up tilt because look at it so graceful uh f tilt is uh just like a hammer bonk kind of like a ddd f tilt instead of the going on like yo-yo thing so those are tilts uh aerials so going on has the kick ebby has this little cart cartwheel thing um so that's nair fair is the fan hit Again, it kind of like brings characters towards you. Back air is uh, the Wario the butt. And up air. Up air is, is going on, except uh, Abby uses the paddle. And down air, again, same as going on, but he uses the hammer. So again, a lot of, uh, you know, copied animations from Goemon since, you know, D-pad variant and everything. Now, some more unique stuff. So, special. He can charge it and walk like Goemon, but it is not a projectile. It is the Meat Hammer uh, for Mystical Ninja starring Goemon. When you hit with it, not only is it a strong attack, but the enemy drops this Dango item, which is food. You can pick it up and it heals you. So there's a uh, some silliness for you right there. You can spawn items that heal you. Pretty cool. So that's neutral special. Down special. It is not a chain pipe. It is this. Anyone that has played Going On's Great Adventure has probably just spammed this move everywhere you go. It's not quite as spammable in this, but it's pretty fun. You get a little stall. You can also use it on the ground. Here. And it has some unique properties here, which I will show you. So on the ground, so the hitbox is, you know, normal hitbox. But as soon as you land on the ground, you are intangible. For 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 frames. Um, and that's grounded or aerial. So you can actually use this. It, it is only when you land on a surface. not it, So if you land on a player, you don't get that intangibility. But, you know, if you're like, you could land on hazards or something like that, and you would be intangible. Just a fun move. And it reaches higher than your jump. So you could like use it on the ground to reach somebody. Pretty cool. 
All right, and now up special. This is the ridiculous thing about Ebi Sumaro. His up special doesn't look like anything crazy. Just flies away. No cloud like going on. Um, you do have hitboxes. But what's crazy about it is you can cancel it. And this is where some serious shenanigans happen. You can just cancel it into any attack. <laughs> so you can, and it reaches so far, like the hitbox is so disjointed. You can like do, I don't play Ebby, but yeah, you can do some crazy stuff and it's hilarious. So I, I hope I see a lot of people playing with Ebby for the jank. Super fun. Uh, but yeah, that's Ebi. Ebi Sumaru. Oh, wait. No, I forgot. His taunt. His taunt has a hitbox. He takes a selfie, and if someone is behind him, it puts him to sleep. If they're in front, I don't think it does that. Or if they're not... Yeah, if they're not facing you, it doesn't put them to sleep. But if they are, sleep. And you see, the hitbox is pretty big. It's definitely one of the best taunts out there because you're taking a selfie. But yeah, that's Ebi Sumara. And we also forgot Ebi Smash attacks. So down smash. It's going mons but with a hammer. Forward smash, going mons but with a hammer. And up smash, going mons but with his flute. Another new character that was added is Metal Luigi. Um, it's really just kind of like the same deal as Metal Mario, like as far as, you know, changing the properties and, and all of that. Um, but it's Luigi. I don't really need to go into all of that, but if you know Metal Mario, you know Metal Luigi. Still very cool he's in the game, and uh, he actually shows can show up now in Remix one player mode. Now, another, another new character that was added, and this is a, a full new character now, like a Metal Luigi scenario, is Dragon King. Those of you that have followed Smash Brothers the last couple years, um, I mean, people knew about this before then, but the last couple years, Sakurai has shown a lot of footage um, of the original Smash Brothers game. And the original character before there was Nintendo IP involved was this guy and the game was called dragon king so uh, so we'll check out some dragon king moves where do we want to go let's go to the new battlefield so these moves a lot of them were pulled from uh this image of a proposed like special attacks and stuff for dragon king so, and almost all of them were used. Um, maybe all, almost all, I don't know. Almost all of them were used. And then some were kind of custom. Some are very similar to existing animations, but Dragon King really has all unique animations. So it really, it like legitimately is a full new character. But why is he a boss variant? Well, you'll see. So grounded stuff, got some normal jabs, rapid jab, forward tilt, a little kick, down tilt, a little kick, up tilt. I could, you know, you gotta use that combo. Now, since uh, since Drag King was like the original, the all the hit sounds are the Japanese hit sounds. Uh, so smash attacks. Oh, that's what I didn't show. All right. So you got the tilts, smash attacks, down smash, similar to Mario. Forward smash, a little punch there. Actually, pretty similar to Wolf's. And up smash is a big kick. Uh, aerials. We got the standard 64 Nair. Fair, similar to Fox, and Mario and Luigi. 
Back air, similar to Mario and Luigi. Up air, kind of similar to Mario and Luigi Falcon. Definitely combo move. And down air spikes. Now, for me, the fun part really, really starts with Dragon King's special attacks. Uh, the neutral is this <laughs> Dragon Ball. It is just a massive attack. Huge hitbox. And just ridiculous. It's so fun to use. But yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, down special has two versions. The grounded one is a uh, ground pound, kind of like a DK ground pound. The aerial one, though, <laughs> this dive bomb attack that will pop people up if you hit the ground near them, but if you hit the opponent, it'll spike them. It's it's hilarious, and you can use it to snap to ledge, so you can like spike a recovering player and still grab ledge. But yeah, it's it's hilarious. And yeah, you will SD with it. But not if you have Blast Zone Warp. And then Up Special. Also two versions. Uh, there's a grounded version. It's a health absorb into a throw. And the aerial version, which is a health absorb into a, like a slam. And when you connect with it, you can pull back. So you can actually like use it off stage. And then if you connect, instead of like drifting off stage like that, you can pull back and land on the stage. But yeah, it's, uh, it's Dragon King. Okay, so not quite the same as new characters, but a ton of new Polygon characters have been added. And by a ton, I mean the rest. That's right, every single remix character at least the ones on the CSS now have a Polygon variant. So Marth, DDD, Mewtwo, Young Link, Dark Samus, Conker, Goemon, and Banjo and Kazooie. And they all have some kind of reference to another thing in their series. Goemon clearly uh, looks like Impact. Um, DDD, actually DDD kind of looks like Ganon, like Pig Ganon. Uh, Banjo and Kazooie. I think Kazooie looks like Dragon Kazooie. I don't know about Marth or Young Link or Dark Samus. But yeah, there's uh, some cool... They had definitely had some fun with the polygons. I uh, can appreciate... Mewtwo looks sick. Um, there were some model improvements uh, looking at like a Lucas... Lucas uh, Polygon got some model improvements. Apparently... Oh, it was, that's right. There were color issues with some objects with some polygons. Um, one of them was Lucas's stick. Uh, another one was Samus's uh, the morph ball and Ness's bat. All right, some character changes. Let's go check out Peppy. So Peppy uh, got his up special delay shortened and he charges faster, which is nice. And the uh, the shoot is faster. And again, the the up the up B is not quite as much of a delay, so it's pretty nice. Um, oh, this uh, I can't I can't really demonstrate it by myself, but there used to be uh, a bug which is it was really fun, but if someone like up B'd into Peppy's grenade, they would just fly across the screen so something like a uh, wolf up special or something like that they would just like zoom across the whole screen it was pretty funny but no more uh peppy's down special sets opponent's velocity to half speed oh okay so yeah if they hit it it'll slow them down instead of speeding them up dark samus got a new css animation yeah and uh, new idle animation and pose Added run time. There's a bunch of stuff. So new idle animation. So that's cool. New run turn. Fists now show up in attacks. Okay. 
some other changes with Dark Samus. Um, the fair hitboxes and animation adjusted. It now starts on frame eight. And the move lasts 36 frames. So it's a little less spammable and it doesn't come out as fast. Uh, it's still a very good move. I mean, the hitbox hasn't changed. But it's less ridiculous. Uh, the Nair... Uh, it's, it now has the same frame date as Mewtwo, so it, it's not like instantly spammable. Like it used to have like no cooldown frames, and now it actually does. Uh, still very good. Uh, they changed the shield damage on it. It is now one instead of zero. Uh, Bear, they extended the overall animation time. It's now 39 frames, and they adjusted the auto cancel window. Dare finally. Uh, no more weird horizontal weak hit. It is now it now functions the same as Samus. Oh, thank goodness. Um, up B hitbox, now also the same as Samus. It used to have the last hitbox used to be like weirdly low. Um, but now it's the same as Samus. So yeah, few changes to Dark Samus. Lucas, some changes to Lucas. Uh, down tilt reduced from 23 to 20 frames. So it's it's faster by three frames. Down special, it used to be able to absorb stuff from behind and when you did it, it turned Lucas around and this is no longer the case. Um, Lucas will no longer turn around, but Lucas also can no longer uh, absorb stuff from behind. Um, Reduce the stun voice volume. I, this is like something I noticed months and months ago. Um, but his uh, when he like shield break or whatever, he was so loud. Uh, if you want it, just go back in a, to an old patch and and listen. It was kind of weird. Uh, so yeah, that that got changed. Graphical effects added to Dare, Nair, and Bear. I honestly don't know because I thought he already did all of this. But maybe something got at I like I, I don't know. I lose track of this stuff um, when it's been like so long since an update. I forget what's uh what's live and what's not, but yep, that happened. DDD uh, got some low key buffs. Uh, hurt boxes removed from his hands. He still got it on his arms, but not his hands. Uh, his head and body hurt box also reduced. Um, they're still quite quite big, you know. If you if you look, but they're they're not just as massive as they were before. So this is definitely a nice thing for DDD players. Um, he was just taking up so much of the screen uh, with his hurt boxes before, and now uh, a little smaller, a little slimmer. Um, up air. The final hit of up air has um, some more knockback growth to it, so it'll like pop players up more. Let's see if I can get. Yeah, that. So, and you know, some people might not like this because then, like, I don't know, they're used to being able to just like chain this over and over and now with the uh the knockback on that last hit doesn't really work the same but it's only the last hit so if you're on a platform you can still get like a lot of the multi hits without it sending them too far but yeah got some knockback growth on that final hit young link apparently just still can't catch a break getting a uh, little shadow nerfs but bomb choose uh, can now be reflected. I didn't even realize before they couldn't be. Um, also, they are no longer invincible when falling off stage. Another thing didn't realize. Um, other than that, it just they added a smoke trail to the bomb shoes. But again, Young Link, poor guy, just just catching catching shadow nerfs. Uh, maybe someday his up will go a little farther, but. I miss I miss playing my boy. 
Uh, some changes for Goemon. His down special, they actually uh, made the hitbox a little smaller. Um, it was a little big before, I guess, just a little too easy to connect. Um, and actually, in this cycle, messed around with an even smaller hitbox. Um, but it was like going through tall characters' legs, like Ganon or Falcon. So actually, the hitbox, I think, not only did it the size change, but I think it might have moved up a little bit so that it would connect um, with those characters. Uh, new graphics for neutral special. I'm not really sure what's new about it. It might just be like some small thing that I'm not noticing or I'm too used to it. Uh, he now has a sleep voice. Um, pipe enter animation apparently was having issues. And entry shadows. Entry shadows fixed. Uh, that was uh, for a lot of characters. I'm not sure what the issue was. I don't know if like, the placement of the shadow wasn't accurate or something, but that got fixed for a bunch of characters. So funny enough, Giga Bowser actually got some changes. Uh, Giga can no longer be grabbed or thrown. So no more giant DK cheese on Giga Bowser. You just can't even grab or throw Giga, which is pretty crazy. Um, the most boss character of the boss characters. Uh, turns around slower, up special can't slip off the edge. So regardless of whether or not you're facing the ledge or facing away, the up special, grounded up special cannot slip off the stage. Neutral special now has unlimited ammo, so you can breathe fire forever. Uh, they added the correct footstep sound, I guess it was wrong. Stomp sound effect to dash, entry shadows. Um, also, and I'll, I'll get to this later, but there is another change to Giga Bowser in Remix one player mode. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there later. All right, some smaller changes. Uh, Ganon, they added the sleep sound. He hides held items when doing a smash attack. His CSS and respawn platform used a slower idle animation. I think because they updated his idle, but then it didn't update uh, on the spawn platform or here in CSS, I forget. But either way, uh, Chic, item shoot animations, item pickup drop animations added. I guess they were just using animations from another character, so they got their own. Uh, Bowser, fixed damage animations, reduced the sub bass on Bowser footstep sound. So anyone that ever had to listen to Bowser play on like really like big or nice speakers, I guess it's not as crazy anymore which, I don't, in my opinion, takes some of the fun out of it. All right, Dr. Mario's taunt now has a hitbox. That's right, when you pull out the pill, it has a hitbox. So, someone will use that in a combo somehow, and it'll be hilarious, but it's there. Marina now obtains four charges when absorbing the golden gunshot, it was previously only one charge, which is kind of funny. Sonic Nair bug fixed. Apparently it was bugged. Who knew? Uh, Supersonic CSS image updated. Um, you won't see it here. It's only visible in 12 character battle mode. But the image got an update, which is nice. It deserved it. All right, character costumes. Any character that didn't have a yellow costume now has one because they added yellow team, which is pretty cool. Um, we just have more choices now when you go to team battle, there's a yellow team. So a lot of characters didn't have yellow costumes before, but now everyone does. So everyone can be on the yellow team. Apparently they're calling it a pajama costume for Fox and Pikachu. Um, but it wasn't just yellow costumes that got added, you see, um, pink costume got added for Fox and Pika. Got the Fox one, pink hat Pika. So it wasn't all yellow costumes, but yeah. Uh, let's see, Falco model updated at a low poly. Falco did not have a low poly. Wario clap animation updated. 
Slippy's landing air B, B animation change to Mario. Some action ID name fixes. Oh, all right. Um, so the E Jigglypuff now actually says Pummeloof. Pummeloof. So that's cool. <laughs> um, you know, like the Japanese version it says Purine. So actually says the name now, which is cool. Polygon Dr. Mario announcer call updated. E-Link announcer clip sample rate fixed. Purin sleep sound corrected. I missed that one. Marina and King DDD taunts can now be canceled early with shield. Nice. So those were pretty long taunts, uh, but now kind of like Mario, you can cancel them a little early uh, with shield. So that's, that's pretty nice. Uh, some more fixed pipe enter animation, this time with Polygon Wario. Crowd chants were added. That's right, new crowd chants. So we got Dark Samus, Going on Mad PM, Marina, and Conquer. And crowd chants are updated for DDD, Sheik, and Lucas. And apparently there was an issue with the crowd chants for J characters. I don't remember what it was. It's been so long, but they're fixed. Um, there are a lot of these magnifying glass updates in this patch. Uh, they're kind of spread out throughout these notes, but um, the magnifying size, the, the the color of the background of the magnifying glass, a bunch of magnifying glass stuff got fixed, and the uh, action strings. Uh, Lucas and Goemon biographies on the character data screen got updated. I think they had typos before. I forget. All right, now this patch got 10 new stages, like new stages. Not just, you know, updated or anything like that. Ten new stages. So we'll try and go through them all real quick. So Scuttle Town from Shantae. Um, this stage, uh, the unique, like, hazard, if you want to call it here. I guess it's technically just called movement. But the stage, the scene changes from daytime to nighttime. Pretty cool. Uh, Big Boo's Haunt got added. At Big Boo's Haunt. Uh, this is a pretty fun stage. Definitely like playing on it. Uh, it looks great. And in Remix 1 player mode, now Mad Piano shows up here. I'm pretty sure. Uh, we got Dinosaur Land got added. Where are you at, Dinosaur Land? It's around here somewhere. We got Dinosaur Land that was added uh, instead of just calling it like another Mario stage or whatever. Dinosaur Land. This, uh, one of my favorites, this patch, Spawn Fear. It's a Doom 64 stage. Uh, spawns a Keiko Demon, flies around, shoots fireballs at you. The platforms move up and down and drop you into green acid that does damage over time if you stay in it. Just a really cool stage, some great music. Uh, really glad it got added. And this, man, Poke Floats, that was, that was a journey. This thing has been in development for so long, and it finally happened. And what's cool about it is that it is not just a one-to-one -one of the Melee version. Uh, there are completely unique Pokemon in there. Uh, with the, their whole you know animations and everything it's really cool i'm glad it got made and it looks great and it's super fun to play on and big snowman this one this almost this stage almost got cut um it got it's been in through several iterations and uh it looks great now got some great music from snowboard kids and it's super fun to play on so i'm glad i'm glad it made it So while technically a new stage, uh, Grim Reaper's Cavern got added uh, based on, oh God, what is that series from Virtual Boy? But yeah, it's in there. 
Um, the it replaces Mementos, but Mementos is still there as a remix variant. So if you love that stage, don't worry, it's not going anywhere. But the main focus now is Grim Reaper's Cavern. Uh, pretty cool stage, uh, especially if you like red. Um, on Metacrystal, so if you go to right here, Metal Cavern, Metacrystal, a remix variant got added. Not the DL, but Meta Chris Tent. Um, pretty pretty fun stage. Uh, just another stage where added some tents, because, you know, why not? Um, Smashville got a remix variant, if I can uh, find it. Smashville got a remix variant. It is not town and city. It's just a, uh, a variant. I uh, got some moving platforms uh, and three platforms instead of the one. I think the stage might be a little bigger. I forget. But, yep, got a remix version of Smashville now. And the modern Battlefield is gone, and it has been replaced with the remix Battlefield, which features, you know, a grassy field and sunflowers and stuff, kind of like from the original Smash Brothers commercial. Really nice stage. Some stages got, that got reworked, uh, Spiral Mountain, got some moving platforms, got reworked, um, just looks looks great. Fountain of Dreams got a rework, uh, looks great now, and the platforms on the side move up and down along with the water that is spraying up from the ground, so it looks really cool. Castle Siege got a rework, looks great, definitely check it out. And uh, the Dragon King and Dragon King Remix stages um, got updated. But what's cool is that by default, it now uses the original Dragon King lay, uh, layout for percent and stuff. You see all the way up at the top now, that's where the stock icons are and the percent. It's that like crazy font. The timer's down in the bottom corner. So that's like the main change here. Don't worry, the, the square is still there. It hasn't gone anywhere. Some other stage updates. Um, we got Corneria City clippings and textures, Frosty Village item spawns, Bowser Keep rendering issues, Mementos and Great Bay, and Dreamland Omega just updated. I don't know what was updated, but they were updated. Yoshi's Island 2, Flat Zone 1 and 2, and Venom graphical improvements. Bowser Stadium bombs now flicker before they respawn on stage. That's kind of nice, actually. Twilight City water physics finally, sorry, finally updated to match Great Bays. Got some water physics there. I like it. Datadyne renamed to Datadyne Central. And computers will no longer attempt to land on the taxi when it's off screen. Flat Zone 2 is now a remix variant of Flat Zone. Dreamland Beta 2 is now a remix variant of Dreamland Beta 1. So some of these stages, uh, they got moved to remix variants to free up space on the select screen. Um, it makes it nice and clean now. We have a, you know, all the slots are filled. It's a perfect number um, for the pages and everything. It looks great. But yeah, some things got moved to remix version. Again, Mini Yoshi's Island is now a remix variant, um, which is interesting because Mini Yoshi's Island is not a remix stage, but I get it. Uh, Showdown is now a remix variant of First Destination. And, ooh, ooh, I want to show this because I am very, very happy that this happened. If you go into your profile, set it to tournament, or change the stage layout to tournament, um, the stage layout now is completely different for tournament mode, uh, which makes me very happy. On the first page, you have all of the most commonly used stages in tournaments. You have Dreamland, Frey Stage, Daytime and Nighttime. Um, you have First Destination, you have the Stadiums, Glacial Remix, Ganon's Tower, Saffron, Dreamland, Dream, uh, Gym Leader Castle, Goomba Road, Smashville, Dr. Mario, Tal Tal, Mel Road, Yoshi's Story, Battlefield. On page two, you have 
other stages that have been used in the past or uh, could definitely be used for tournaments. Um, all of them pretty legit. And on the third page, it is Dreamland only variants. Um, this does include Dreamland with no Wispy. So Dreamland no Wispy is not on the front page, but it is on this third page. Um, along with Winter Dreamland, Deku Tree, all these different Dreamland variants that have been used. They're all just Dreamland, and they all have their hazards off. All of them have hazards and movement off. The only one, the only Dreamland variants with hazards are on the first page with Dreamland. And I believe, oh, uh, Saffron Dreamland. And Yoshi's Dreamland on page two has the clouds. Thumbnails were added for some stage variants that didn't have them before. Uh, Dreamland only profile fixed. Yeah, uh, the new versions of Deku Tree and Criteria used to show up on Dreamland only, but now they don't. Uh, One Piece spawns tweaked for some stages. Stage select screen HUD updated. And one cool thing they added was a roulette feature. So instead of hitting the random button, which will randomize all of the stages on all of the pages, hitting roulette will just randomize on this one page you're on and you can stop it whenever you want or it'll stop on its own. Pretty cool, you just hit C down on random and it'll do that. Some other fixes, uh, hitbox plus setting, stage enhancements. Oh, you can see the Corneria Jets. Okay, Rainbow Road now behaves correctly. Gym Leader Castle's Pokeball now visible. Nice. Deku Tree Water now cooperates. So here in the stage settings, you have options for Wispy and Saffron, right? Wispy mode, that was something added last patch or two patches ago. You can change the frequency and strength of Wispy. And you can also change now the rate of Pokemon on Saffron. Now, if you do this and you go to stage select, it'll show up when you are hovering over the stages. You see it says hazards on and the S for super, H for hyper. Some various stage backgrounds were updated to look better on emulator. Uh, Off-screen magnifying glass. Here's the magnifying glass stuff I talked about. Um, and stage profiles were updated. So like stuff like staff picks um, were, those were updated. Now, new game modes. Remix Race to the Finish is now in the game. Uh, it's pretty cool. It started out as this massive, massive stage kind of like the melee version, uh, but it didn't have multiple exits. It had multiple paths, but yeah, it was so long and so big that it just couldn't be made to work like on console. Uh, so this was what we ended up with. And instead of racing down like the original, you go up uh, through a variety of hazards like the, the lava there and these rolling bomb things that are in the original and the bumpers. Uh, they added a conveyor belt which is pretty cool. Two conveyor belts. And then uh, you're, you're there. So nothing too crazy, but it is new and fun and it shows up in uh, Remix one player mode. It is the bonus level three. Another new feature that got added, if you go into the data section is gallery mode. That's pretty nice. It just plays like 1P ending screens and uh, plays some music along with it. Press start, you know, go to the next one. And there are a bunch of different controls here. So press start to enter idle mode where it just puts all 1P images and music on a timer. Press start to press start a second time to enter idle two random music, and matching 1P images cycle on a timer. Press A to skip to the next song.
press control stick. So you can do a lot with this. You can kind of automate it. Press L and R to drum. Press E to change drum sets. That's pretty funny. Wow, there's a lot of drum sets. Oh, definitely that one. All right. <laughs> All right. So gallery mode, again, it's really nice. You can kind of just like throw it on in the background and let it uh, let it cycle through the images and the music and everything. It's really nice. Of course, new bonus stages got added for Banjo and Kazooie. You know, new characters, uh, new bonus stages. And this one is really cool because it features this barrel section, kind of like uh, Donkey Kong Country. It's so cool. Oh! I did it. Nice. Yeah, really, really cool bonus. Definitely the coolest bonus stage out of all of them that have been added. Uh, major props to uh, JT and whoever else worked on this. Um, I know it took a lot of work to get it uh, functioning the way it is, and it's so cool. Uh, Polygons, DDD also got their um, for the platforms updated. Now in Remix One Player mode, uh, Banjo and Kazooie are, you know, added into the uh, the pool of characters you can end up fighting. Um, they added some new duels on stage four, as opposed to just having Star Fox team. There's also the Mystical Ninjas, which is going on in Ebisumaru, and the Rare Pair, which is Banjo and Kazooie and Conquer. On stage nine. They added a new boss. Um, they added the Metal Mario Bros. You could fight Metal Mario and Metal Luigi. Uh, the new polygons were added to stage 10, which is the fighting polygon team. Uh, Mad Piano Fight now takes place on Big Boost Haunt. Remix Race to the Finish, like I said, added to bonus three. Kirby Team Battle now randomizes properly and features new hats. I, f I forget, we had, we had talked about um, them using the magic hat Kirby for like the final one. And I don't know if that happened, but it's pretty cool. Either way, uh, Giga Bowser. Here's some, I, I had mentioned this earlier, but Giga Bowser now, finally, um, I know it took a long time to like get this working and everything, um, but Giga Bowser now has stamina on the final stage instead of percent, uh, kind of like Master Hand. He also doesn't flinch when hit. So it's a completely different fight now. Um, you have to take away stamina instead of just trying to get him to like knock himself off stage <laughs> like before. Uh, so the fight's very different. Frosty Village is now a stage option for conquer battles in one player mode. And Great Bay was removed from the stage pool in one player mode. It's funny, Frosty Conquer's Conquer stage is always so annoying to fight on because it's so big. And now his second option is another huge stage. Uh, we got some bunch of training mode changes for all those training mode appreciators. So you can now scroll through the custom menu pages with R and Z. So you go to the custom menu, R and Z, you can scroll through. Um, only B closes the custom menu. D-pad controls toggle added to options, so you can control with D-pad. Oh no, what have I done? Uh, music move to a single line, added stage background toggle. So you can do that. Um, CPU teching toggles added, so you can have them tech randomly, roll backwards, forward, or in place. You can change their DI. You can change their DI strength. 
in the direction. So there's a, a lot of options added to training mode to help people practice for like tournaments and that kind of stuff. Custom spawn now remembers if character is on a ledge so you can have someone start out on a ledge. Updated Donkey Kong Captain Falcon names in training mode. CPU RNG fix, it won't just always be Luigi. <laughs> Fixed menu inputs when speed is not 1-1. One, one. Fixed ledge spawning. So something in one player mode and bonus stages, but high scores are not saved when gameplay altering options are enabled. So if you're messing around with uh, some stuff in here, you know, you, oh, not that one, but size, you know, like doing stuff like that, it just doesn't save your score anymore. So you can't, you can't juice a high score. Bonus practice and one player. Oh, they have an icon. Yeah, look at that. High score disabled. So you know you don't like accidentally have something on. You don't realize you don't like change the knockback or something and have it not save your score. So the size and Kirby hat options are, are available in one player mode as we just saw. And the fun thing about the Kirby hat where is he? Kirby hat. You can have random or the uh, magic hat, which every time you push B, it'll be a different move. Unless you have a full charge with one of the abilities, and then it'll it'll be that one the next uh, the next time you push B. Uh, handicap for CPU is fixed. Also applies to training mode. Handicap settings no longer need to be turned on for it to function. Twelve character battle UI updated. Proper animation now using DDD is defeated in 12 character battle mode. All right, now into the new features. Uh, some new items were added. One being the Dango, 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 which is a food item from Mystical Ninja. It heals uh, like 8% or something like that, 9%. But the other item added is the P-Wing, which uh, when you pick it up, it gives you infinite jumps until it runs out. <laughs> uh, when it starts running out, the uh, noise it makes when you jump is uh, lower pitched. So it's, it's, you, you'll know when it's running out. Uh, really fun item though. Um, definitely going to be playing some matches with uh, P-Wing only on very high. You know, Link can actually recover with it. Oh, you can't go under this level. Let's see. Yeah, I see it's a different sound when it's running out. Uh, the blue shell will now always explode when hitting players and has increased kill potential. So yeah, more knockback on the blue shell and it'll explode. Fighters no longer build infinite speed during downward play. Oh yeah, so you didn't really notice it before, but if someone hit got hit by a pitfall, and like by a ledge or something, and it spiked them down, um, they would infinitely build speed. But you didn't notice because there were blast zones. But now there's the blast zone warp toggle. Um, so they were just like scrolling through the screen super fast, and uh, yeah, it was breaking the game. Uh, sound effect added for cloaking device pickup and expiration. Pokemon settings were added not just on, um, not just on Saffron, but the actual Pokeballs. You can choose sound effects. You can pick which ones appear. So yeah, pretty cool. Definitely fun to mess around with the uh, the different sound effects. Pause HUD legend added. Press R while paused and the legend pops up. You can pick next music track, random music track. You can zoom the camera. It, it all, You could do this stuff before, but now there's just it a way to see the controls. So that's nice.
Some other gameplay options that were added, uh, there's a Z cancel toggle now. You can have Z cancels function like melee. Uh, they can be auto Z cancel or there's a glide mode, which is pretty fun to play around with. There is a no hit lag toggle. Uh, spot dodge was updated so you can't slip off ledges with it. Um, some changes were made to air dodging. Charge smash attacks added to the game. I forget how long you can charge stuff up, but it's definitely a fun thing to play around with. Um, that's like charge smash attacks is probably one of the gameplay toggles that I could see people throwing on and using the most. Um, just because it, it like doesn't change a ton from the original game, and it's just like a fun thing to have. So yeah, I could definitely see people uh, messing around with that a lot. Now, a really silly game... Uh, let's see, is it gameplay? Yeah. A really silly new setting is this Blast Zone warp that was shown in the trailer, where your character, you know, won't explode in the Blast Zone. They'll just screen wrap. Uh, it's a really fun thing to play around with. And uh, now, I don't know how you really keep track of something like a match like this because no stocks are lost. I guess you could just keep track of percent, but it's a pretty fun way to play. Uh, laugh track and egg options added to punish failed Z cancel. D-pad CSS cursor added to remix settings. So you can control the cursor with the D-pad. PK Thunder Reflect Crash Fix. That's like a vanilla crash, I'm pretty sure. So it's it's added as a toggle to remix settings. Um, some accessibility features were added, uh, like flash guard and screen shake, uh, just to reduce you know things like flashing lights or the screen shaking. So it's kind of nice. Um, yeah, it can help with like motion sensitivity. I don't think this is mentioned in the patch notes, but on CSS right here, you can hold L and it'll take you to settings. Uh, it's huge. Same with um, on stage select, you can hold L and it'll take you to settings. Uh, I don't remember seeing this in the patch notes. Maybe we'll get to it later, but it's like kind of huge. All right, going through some more settings. Uh, Dragon King HUD added, we talked about that. There are some adjustments to the AI. Uh, level 10 have high DI, random direction, advanced AI as medium DI. Uh, Mad Piano, better dare detection, and they won't do up B as an offensive attack, so fewer SDs. Going on AI is more accurate somehow. J Donkey Kong neutral special now behaves correctly. Oh man, I wonder what was wrong with it before. Uh, some changes to Jigglypuffs, AI, Peppy AI. Wolf AI will recover towards center stage always. So again, fewer SDs. Giga Bowser AI had to be changed a bunch because the character got changed. Some stage fixes. And then my least favorite change, random character with L toggle moved from CSS panel to remix settings. You know, I really like the random character thing, but now if I want to use it, I have to go in the settings and turn it on instead of it just always being on. So sadness for me, but it's there. Uh, CPU default in remix settings no longer keeps overriding CPU level settings. Saffron City Pokemon rate added to state settings. Yeah, we, we, we went over that one. And it has the, uh, the timings for default super and hyper. And quick attack. Quick attack's fine, just nonstop. Um, initial damage setting added to CSS panel. It only affects the first stock though. So you can like, if you want to start your first stock with 100%, you can always do that. Uh, poison damage, so the poison is on the doom stage and you can uh, mess with that. You can also just have it on during a match constantly. So you're just, everyone has a ticking percent dot on them. Uh, some more D-pad stuff. Like 
stick swap switches d-pad and stick inputs yeah there's a lot of d-pad accessibility things in there now uh kirby hats again already got got updated we talked about that the new characters got hats the random option got enabled the magic hat got enabled we went over this already same with like how charging neutral specials works Options can now quickly cycle by holding A on arrows in CSS panel. That's nice. We talked about yellow team already. Oh, there it is. Settings menu shortcut added for quick access. Activate by holding L on character select or stage select screen. Uh, you can also now buffer L to quickly retry bonus modes upon clearing or failing a stage. So before, you know, you would just like pause and reset. But if you actually failed or completed, you had to wait for the whole thing. Now you can just hold L. Uh, you can also use it in multi-man and home run contest. Salty run back option, remix settings fixed. Uh, there's an alternate button combo for salty run back um, if you're using D-pad. And, um, oh yeah, there's a new post-match screen transition added. Uh, it's just the Smash logo. So that's pretty cool. And there's um, there's also a secret, a secret, a few secrets added in the game. We'll see we'll see if you all can find them. Uh, if you do find them, feel free to uh, you know say something in the comments or whatever. But there's a couple a couple fun ones in the game now. We'll see who finds them. Now, almost it feels like half of the patch notes are going to be music updates. There were an absurd amount of music updates in this patch. Um, I think the new and updated music tracks in this one patch is actually more music than was in the original game total. So I really encourage you to check out the full list of music tracks in the game right now. There is so much stuff I like can't even go over it all. So major props to the music team. They did so much. Look at all this. There's menu music, tons of menu music, tons of new music, tons of updated music. Definitely check it all out. Uh, and then in case you didn't notice, the main logo for Smash Remix was updated. Look at that. Beautiful. Well, that wraps up everything for this update. And with the whole character select screen being filled out and not really room for more, who knows what'll happen next. But if there is another update, I'll uh, I'll be here doing another one of these videos. And uh, if there's not, then I'll see you around somewhere. So go enjoy the patch, play the game, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys around.